Hello and what's up Facebook? I am here with you on location. Uh, we decided to drive the van around a little bit if anybody hasn't seen the van and we are standing at uh, Celebration Tower in Cape Canaveral. I think that's what it's called. But it's a really cool looking tower you can kind of see behind me there. Um, so this is a special off location, on location episode of What's Up Wednesday. And uh, again, if you don't know who I am, my name's Ramon and I'm with 321 Kiteboarding. We come by every single week to stop in and say, hey, what's up? Um, and I'd love to start touring around Cocoa Beach and Cape Canaveral and kind of showing off spots. So if you're watching this and you own a place or, or have somewhere cool to suggest, suggest it and I'll go there. Sorry about the wind noise. Uh, next episode that we go outside, I'll work a little bit harder on making some kind of cool mic thing for the, for the iPhone. But in the meantime, just want to let you guys know if you like our show, click that little subscribe button, mash that little thumbs up button, and uh, subscribe for notifications when we go live. We typically only go live once a week for this, so don't miss it. Um, and also, I put it on YouTube right afterwards, so if you're a fan of YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel, 321 Kiteboarding. All right, so uh, today we're gonna start off with our lessons learned segment. My lessons learned segment is a segment where I love to tell you guys eh, things I've learned. And what I learned was that downwinders are absolutely the blast. For those lucky 15 of you that went with us last Saturday for our downwinder that we announced, it was amazing. We had wind, we had waves, we had fun, we had a great trip back. Um, so it's all about community and what's nice about community is we all get together, we do what we love and even if there wasn't any wind, I'm sure we would have had a blast. But there was wind and there was plenty of film so I'm editing a little bit and it will be coming out hopefully sometime in the next uh, couple of days, we'll see. Um, so. The lesson learned was, you know, get your friends together, get everybody together because this is a community sport and we love having a lot of people sharing the same thing that we loved. Now, product highlight for this week is really, really cool. Not necessarily kiteboard related, but it's something that you should have in your car. And they are air chairs. If you've never seen one, they're really cool. This one's a uh, Brazilius. We carry them in the shop, all kinds of crazy colors. And all it is is a portable hammock. Think of it that way. So I want you guys to check it out. I've got one set up over here. I was going to do a real neat trick where uh, I actually, you know, made you think I was setting one up. But forget that. All you got to do is relax. <laughs> all right. You guys don't want to see me relaxing. You want to see the actual show. So back to where we are. Um, so that's the product highlight. These things are really cool. They're super easy to, to use. I'm going to put together a video on our website. They're already on there of how to use them. But all you do is open it up. The wind fills it up. You close it up. You roll it up. And you've got a portable hammock. How cool is that? Um, so that's our product highlight for this week. The Air Chair by Brazilias. Sold only at 321 Kite Okay. Next thing I wanted to talk to you guys is, uh, is this is our 10 most segment. So the 10 most whatever, 10 most things. And what I wanted to talk about was the 10 top mistakes that kiteboarders uh, use. And I'm going to uh, actually read off of this because it's a long list. And it's something that uh, a lot of you might be familiar with. So one of the things, and these aren't in any particular order, but maybe number 10 will be like the most important one. Who knows? Uh, first thing is forgetting your pump. How many of you have gone kiteboarding and forgot your pump? And this applies to all sports. I mean, this could be whatever critical piece of gear you need that if you don't have it, you can't do whatever it is you're gonna do. So if you're running marathons, it would be your shoes, I guess, you know. But for us, it's a pump. It's very hard to blow up a kite with your mouth. So I don't suggest it. The next thing is rigging too big or too small of a kite. If you're rigging too small, it's not that bad because uh, worst case scenario, you just kind of don't get going. But we have some really great areas here in Cocoa Beach and Cape Canaveral that it doesn't matter what you rig. If you end up downwind, big deal, you walk back. But in some places in this country, if you uh, rig the wrong kite or the wind dies off, you are in for one heck of an adventure. So rigging the proper size kite is really important. If you don't know, ask somebody. That's real simple. Rigging too big is the worst you can do because if it's too big, you really have no escape route. It's gonna be too windy and if the wind picks up, you're gonna have too much kite. So when in doubt, rig small, all right? Number three, not taking lessons. I mean, let's face it, not taking lessons. This is coming from a guy who tried to teach himself. I'm not saying you can't. I'm just saying you really shouldn't and you're gonna save money. Literally any money you spend on bad gear, hospital bills, or whatever it is that you're doing wrong, breaking things, it's gonna have paid for a lesson and none of that would have ever happened. 
Number four, <laughs> leaving your gear on the beach. Worse than forgetting your gear when you leave home is forgetting your gear when you're going home because that usually doesn't come back to you. But uh, by the way, I, ha I had props and everything ready for you guys, but at 321 Kiteboarding this week, we have received one pump, call us if you have lost one at the 520 Slick, and one pair, one pair of eyeglasses. Uh, I was gonna have a really big cardboard pair made up, but hey, you know what? Prop department was behind today. So leaving your gear, no fun, no bueno, don't do it. Number five, not doing a pre-flight check. Pre-flight check for kiteboarding simply means you're making sure your bridles are not twisted or there's no knots in them, that your lines are, cor are correctly uh, attached to the sides, that your cap on your kite inflate valve is actually closed. How many times have you put your kite up in the air, you start going somewhere and you realize you got a dangling cap and your air could potentially leak out. So make sure you do those pre-flight checks every single time. It's simple, it's easy, and it's just a mental check to make sure that you're not in trouble once you do actually launch the kite in the air. Number six, pulling in or sheeting in too much on that bar when you're relaunching the kite, it drives us and our instructors mad because when your kite's in the water, if you guys aren't kiters, I'm sorry, bear with me for a minute or two here, but when your kite's in the water, sitting there, touching the water, all you have to do is take that outside line with just your finger right right by where that float is and just fly the kite up. I see too many people sheeting in on the bar, pulling it really close to themselves. It causes the kite to backstall, it causes the kite to have too much power, it causes the kite not to want to relaunch. So if you're doing that, don't take offense. Just stop. Please, just stop. It drives us absolutely batty. Okay. That was number six. Number seven, riding in bad weather. We're all pretty much guilty on that. We always kind of find excuses why it looks safer than it should be. But if other people aren't riding, you probably shouldn't be riding either. If you're experienced enough to handle it, great. You're experienced enough, but riding in bad weather, not a good idea. Pick another day, wait a couple of minutes. It's Florida, by the way. Weather changes in five minutes, so it'll get better. Number eight, not knowing how to activate your safety release. Would you drive a car and not know where the brakes are? Nope. Would you jump out of an airplane and not know what cord to pull? If you actually pull cords, I obviously don't parachute, you can tell. No, you probably wouldn't. So don't do the same thing with your kiteboarding gear. Make sure you know exactly where your safety release is, how to use it, and be comfortable with that. Activate it. Next time you go out, just pop that thing when you're done and bring your kite in. It's easy, okay? Number nine. <laughs> disconnecting a tangled mess of bars and lines from your kite. So if you've had the unfortunate circumstance to find your kite rolled in the waves, messy on the beach, whatever it is, it looks like you've got spaghetti, don't take it off your kite because technically there's no knots in that bar. All you have to do is tease out the little loop ends. Everything's just a big loop tangled inside of a loop takes you five or ten minutes on the beach and you'll be back to flying in no time. The biggest, okay, not the biggest because we haven't hit number ten yet, but one of the biggest mistakes I see people do is disconnect those lines off their kite. Now the bar, the line ends are going to get tangled and actually start making knots. So save yourself a couple of hours and six pack of soda or whatever it is that you enjoy as a beverage um, and not have to take those lines apart at home in what we call a spaghetti bowl and just leave it attached to the kite. Figure it out, it takes about 10 minutes. And number 10, look, it's right there, number 10. Number 10, not asking for help. Why would you not ask for help? This is one of the friendliest sports in the entire world. People are dying to help. So ask for help. People wanna give it to you. I wanna give it to you. I'm here giving it to you. So I'm gonna show you guys around real quick. Freedom Tower, it's about to get really windy. This is Port Canaveral, by the way. If you guys haven't seen Port Canaveral, there's cruise ships over there. Um, way behind that thing. Uh, it's a really cool place, lots of partying going on, and new spinnaker looking tower thing. So anyway, hey everybody, thank you very much for joining me in my What's Up Wednesday, and I can't wait to see you guys next week. And again, if you have any suggestions, let me know. Congratulations to the winners of those keychains, and if you haven't received them in the mail yet, they are definitely in the mail. So, this is Ramon Chavon, signing out on episode 14 of What's Up Wednesday. See you guys later. Finish.